everybody. In this video, I'll be sharing my October and November makes and December plans. So the reason that I'm combining my October and my November makes is because I was doing the Carolina Renaissance Festival during those months, so I didn't get enough sewing done where I felt like I would have enough for one video, so I combined them and then I'll also be sharing with you my December plans. I didn't really do any historical sewing um, over those two months, but I was wearing historical garb every weekend, so that felt pretty good. Uh, the only little bit of historical sewing that I did was just to make some banners and signage for my troupe in the Renaissance Festival. I did do a lot of contemporary sewing over these past two months, and there's a lot more contemporary sewing to come. I did a lot of sewing for gifts these two months, and actually not for Christmas gifts. Uh, just for other gifts. Um, my nephew just turned three months old and I sewed him an on the go romper from Apple Tree Sewing Patterns. It was so cute on him and everybody loved it and his mom asked me if I could make one for her because it looks and feels very comfy to wear. I also sewed some things for my friend Kristen. The first one was a version of the plantain top where I actually altered it to have a higher neckline, be cropped, and then have a zipper closure in the back. I made this out of a bamboo stretch spandex jersey and some matching stretch lace and I made this based on a maternity top she had fallen in love with online but couldn't find in stock anywhere that she just needed for her maternity photos so I made her um, my own version of it and she really liked it. I also made Kristen's son Caden a present because he turned one year old this month or I guess this past month in November, and I made him the Ollie Bomber jacket, which was so cute. Even though he turned one, I used the free 2T size of the pattern, and it fit him perfectly, but he's a huge kid, so uh, it totally makes sense. He's wearing 2T clothing um, in other clothing, so I would say that it is accurately sized. And he also wore it in their family photos, so I can't wait to see those photos and share them with you guys. I made myself a stretch leather version of the Grain Line Studios Morris Blazer, and I lined it with a really fun ITY knit. I'm really happy with that, and it's been great to wear for the fall, um, just when I, as a casual light jacket. I got a serger, and so I have been practicing a few things for myself. Um, with that these past two months. The first is this top that I'm wearing right now. It is a sweater knit material and it is just a dolman sleeve top um, that I self-drafted, kind of based it off of some other tops that I had. Dolman sleeves are pretty easy because you don't really need to draw an arm style. You just kind of taper it off in an arm shape and then slap another uh, band on top of it. So I've really enjoyed getting wear out of this. It is a sweater knit material I've had for about a year now, so I'm glad that I finally used it. I also used some material that I've had for about a year to make the gable top by Jennifer Lauren Handmade Patterns out of a double brushed polyester with mauve stripe on it. And I was really happy with that top, really happy with how it came together, it went very fast. And um, I was really worried that I would not, that the neckline would be too tricky, but it was actually really easy to do. Additionally, I started on a plantain for myself out of a black double knit cotton. However, um, I was a little too overconfident with the serger, and I've attached the sleeves like three times, and uh, they keep getting messed up. Currently, they're sewn on inside out, so that one's in the scrap pile for now. I might come back to it later. There are a lot of halfway projects that I'm in the middle of right now. Some of them you can see behind me, and these are actually mostly done. These are a Christmas pajama set that I'm making for my boyfriend and I. All they need to currently are hems in the shirts, and I need to do buttons and buttonholes in the button placket of his shirt, and I'm also going to sew buttons in the faux button placket on my pants. I really love tacky Christmas stuff, and so does my boyfriend. He has an oppo suit, so when I found this waffle, thermal knit fabric at Joann's. I just had to get it and I begged him, please will you let me make you a Henley and he said yes. The raglan top pattern that I used for my top is McCall's M6992 and um, it went together really well. It, there's a dart in the upper shoulder which is kind of weird for me especially in a knit but I've never sewn a raglan before so maybe that's just how it is. Also I just feel like it's on the large side, you know, um, I've kind of forgot how much uh, mainstream patterns have an ease and I think it's way too much ease for a knit garment. It feels really loose in the arms but I am using it for a PJ shirt so it worked out alright. The pants that I made myself are Simplicity 8268 and again I just feel like there's a ton of ease in them. 
Um, I definitely even went like an inch smaller than my actual measurements for picking my size and it still has a lot of extra room in the hip area. Um, so if I made them again, I would definitely size down, but you know, they are pajamas. It's good for them not to be skin tight, but with a jogger pant, if I were to be making one for myself to wear out, I would prefer a slimmer fit. I was going to use a McCall's Henley t-shirt pattern for my boyfriend's t-shirt, and then when I broke it out to start cutting it out, I realized I had bought the XL and XXL size packet. I didn't get the correct size, and actually though, when I was measuring his favorite Henley against what the finished, pat finished garment measurements were on the packet, his favorite Henley, which is a medium from Target, is smaller than the size small on the McCall. So again, way, 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 ton of ease in the um, knit pattern. So I wound up just copying his favorite Henley and it worked amazingly. I'm so happy with it. Really glad to have just a basic t-shirt block for him now so I can try to convince him to let me sew him more things. I was a little worried though about sewing the partial placket because I wasn't using the pattern for that, but I followed a tutorial here on YouTube by someone called Patty Dew, and her tutorial was super easy to follow. I've seen ways where you basically like sew a big rectangle on it and then do all kinds of crazy folding to get the two sides, but her way was actually using two rectangles and kind of just encasing the cut edges and it was so easy to do. It went together really well. It was kind of late at night so I did every step twice but that was more of my mistakes like oh I caught the fabric under my top stitching so I have to rip out the top stitching and do it again. Um, things like that. So really recommend that tutorial. I'll make sure to link it um, in the description box below. Another project I mostly finished but it just needs hemming is the toaster sweater from So House 7 and I actually did this following the Simplicity version of the pattern in this sweater knit that I also got at Joann's. It has these beautiful copper threads in it, um, really fun, really warm, um, and I was excited to finally do this pattern. All it needs is a hem and I'm also just going to tack down the facings on the top so they don't flip up too much. If you've been following me on my Instagram stories then you know that I have been needle felting for the past month and I was really trying to get this project done by by Thanksgiving, but unfortunately it didn't happen. When I went home for Thanksgiving week with my family, I spent most of the time packing up all of my belongings that were still in my parents' garage into a shipping container to ship um, back over here now that I have a house and things to keep them. So I am not quite done with my needle felting project, but I'm really, really close to being done. I'm really excited about how it's been turning out. Um, this was all started as a way to cover the hole that I ripped in this knit material when I was dyeing this dress, but it's done a lot to really add a lot of visual interest to a uh, otherwise plain dress. So really happy with how it's been turning out, it's just not quite finished yet. Another partially finished project that I've been working on is my The Little Red Dress Project dress. And what I have completed right now, it doesn't look like a lot, but it feels like a lot, and that is the corselet I will be putting under the dress to help hold it up because I am planning an off the shoulder dress and I do not have the equipment to hold a dress up without it being significantly over my shoulders. So I decided to make a corselet for underneath the dress and the dress will be attached to the top of this corselet and then this corselet being very tight around my body and also having some boning in it will help to hold the dress up. This corselet is actually based on a McCall's costume pattern. I can't remember the name of it, so I'll put it right here, but it is for like a, a ballerina costume. Um, and I picked it because it had a lot of different panels. It had boning, it was going to be very tight fitting. And so I made, wind up making like three different muslins to get the fit just right. I had to take the cup size down, of course. Um, had to shorten the waistline, which is normal for me in corsets because I have a very short waist. And I also, um, altered the top a little bit to not make it so extreme um, and I made the boning channels out of some really festive bias tape that I made um, but I enjoyed working with this pattern I think that it's a great starting point if you're looking to make something custom fit to you um, I didn't like their instructions for um, inserting the boning and they actually have it closing with velcro in the back so mine will be closing with a zipper I've just got to add it in. Um, but that's all I have left on this is just to add the zipper and also um, hem the bottom. I'm going to be hemming the bottom with just a bias tape facing. and um, But I'm, I'm really happy with it so far. It fits me like a glove, which is the idea. 
and then I will be starting to drape my The Little Red Dress Project dress very soon. I'm going to be using this wine stretch velvet, so because this material is stretchy, um, the whole dress itself is going to be a lot more forgiving in terms of the shapes and stuff that I do. I'm not going to have to do a five piece, however many pieces, eight piece um, <laughs> pattern anymore to get it shaped right. It's just going to be very simple and then the specialness is going to be in the finishing. The last half finished project that I've been working on um, is my, I think my only, no it's not my only Christmas present that I'm making this year, but it's the only Christmas present that I'm making this year that I have started already, and that is a tree skirt for my boyfriend's mom. The tree skirt itself is actually um, mostly finished, I just have to, I'll put the lining in at the end which will be very easy. But right now I'm currently working on beading 13 jeweled snowflakes onto the tree skirt. So I'm at snowflake number three right now. It's going pretty well. I'm trying to get about a snowflake a day done so that um, I can have it done well in advance of Christmas and no longer worry about it. I think that's a really good segue to move into my plans for the month of December. Besides finishing up all of the current half finished projects and all of the hemming that I have to do, um, there are a couple other projects that I'm planning on doing this month. One of them I'm going to be starting very soon and that is to make a dress with this glorious, glorious tacky sweater knit from Girl Charlie. Um, again, I'm just intending to copy a current item that I have. It's a dress not that's not dissimilar to this top. It's a dolman sleeve, very relaxed fit, slouchy, kind of cute casual dress. So it should be really easy to copy it into this material. Um, next Wednesday is my company's Christmas luncheon and we will be having a tacky sweater competition. And it's almost exciting because I was like, ooh, should I wear my PJs? Should I wear my new dress that I'm making? Should I wear my other tacky Christmas dress that I own that I didn't make but I still have another one? Um, but I think that I'm going to wear this dress and also wrap some string lights around myself. So it'll be really fun. Make sure that you guys follow me on Instagram to see those pictures when they come up. More Christmas presents are in the plan. My sister was really impressed by my needle felting over Thanksgiving and she had found these sweaters she really likes from a designer and she saw them on Instagram and she's in love with them and um, but they're way too expensive for her so she wants me to make her a version. Um, they're these sweaters that have like your initial on in the front not unlike the Weasley sweaters although I don't think that was her first connection to make. So she bought a cashmere sweater from Uniqlo and I'll be felting her initial onto the front of it. It shouldn't take me that long and I'm actually going to use my Cricut to cut out the template for the letter. So I think that I might make a tutorial on doing that and on kind of making your own DIY version of a designer item. So make sure that you guys subscribe and stay tuned for that video. My sister also wants me to make her another designer copy. She just finds things and she sends them to me and says, it's too expensive, make it for me. <laughs> um, which is a very simple cotton velvet purse that she really liked. Again, I've never heard of the designer before, but it seemed fairly easy to make, so I will be making her that. I've got the materials for that already. She bought them for me. You know, she's not completely terrible, but um, so I will hopefully be getting that done as well. Lastly, I have some kind of up in the air projects that I always have. Things that are definitely on my radar right now, but I might not get to this month, and I'm not planning on getting to this month in order to hopefully save my sanity, but if all my other projects wind up going faster, these are going to be the next things I'm starting on. First of all, I have three different colors of Ponte that I've bought recently. I've discovered No Pill Ponte and desperately want some new work pants. So I have black, purple, and an olive green. The purple is really bright and I don't think that I'm going to make myself pants out of it um, because it's just way brighter than I thought an eggplant should be, but the olive and the black are really nice, so hopefully I'll be making just some slim fit pants out of those. I bought this gorgeous metallic sweater knit as an impulse purchase um, because it was just too beautiful to pass up. I love sweater knits and um, this one is so pretty. I'm planning on making the Names Clothing Wrap Dress. I can't remember the name for life of me. I also can't really pronounce it, but it's that dress that is kind of a self wrap and it comes out at the waist and you wrap it around. So that's what I'm planning with this gorgeous fabric. Um, it would be nice to finish it by the end of the year because I think it'd be a great party dress, 
but we will see whether or not I finish it or not. Lastly, I have finally picked my next historical make, and if you follow me closely, you might be thinking, wait a second, I thought you already had your next historical make picked out. And it's true, for the past um, probably six months or so, I have been planning on making a reproduction of this gorgeous dress from Giordano's The Birth of St. John the Baptist, which is a 1490s Italian Renaissance dress, and I'm still intending on making that dress. Um, I love it so much, but I have come up with a new project that I'm going to bump a step ahead of it, and it even feels okay, like it's not cheating that much, because I'm going to be making a dress with a very similar shape, not much difference. I think I'm going to change it and have, to have it be side lacing instead of front lacing, and the overdress is going to be closed instead of open on the sides, but that is the only difference. And this dress is actually going to be an Italian Renaissance version of Wonder Woman. I got talking to a friend from the Renaissance Festival and we have some very creative characters on our royal court. We have, like, a, for example, a Sir John of Kirk. We used to have a Sir Clark of Kent. So we thought what a cool character it would be to have a Princess Diana of Themyscira. And um, I just knew that the Italian Renaissance shape, especially the sleeves, that are so tight um, along the forearm and have the beautiful, beautiful puffs would be really reminiscent of her bracers that she wears. And so it just kind of popped into my head and then it didn't get out of my head. And I was just obsessed with the idea of doing an Italian Renaissance version of Wonder Woman. So I'm really excited about it. Um, the, the kicker for me was that I have so much extra of this blue crushed velvet fabric of the tree skirt that I've been working on. I bought way too much of it at the beginning, and so I was like, oh, well, that would be perfect. Even though I don't typically use crushed velvet for historical makes, since this one is so much more of a costume, I figured that it would be okay, and I also just really wanted to make it. So it was a good excuse for me to say, I've already got the fabric, I have to do it now. Thanks so much for watching, guys. What Christmas presents have you sewed this year or are planning to sew in this month? both for yourself and for others. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel for more awesome content like this, and make sure that you follow me on Instagram at Ms. Jen Makes. We have done a slightly branding, so make sure that you check out that video introducing the new member of Ms. Makes, Rebecca, and I will see you all very soon. Bye.